Hi everyone, it is background time. Eek, eek. Okay, we have our brick wall stencil, which I showed to you right at the um, beginning of this whole series of tutorials. You've waited really patiently to see the background. I'm going to give you my first tip with this. Now you can see it's got a border around where there's obviously it needs a border around it. Now, when I put it on this page, I'm not going to put it, I don't want to line, it's hard for you to see, this flat edge with the top of my paper. I'm going to overlap it a bit. I want the actual edge of my page to come halfway along the top row of bricks so it looks like the brick wall just continues off the page like an infinity swimming pool but an infinity brick wall. Um, if I start the bricks at the top I think it will just look a little bit less realistic. It's not going to look realistic. And the same with the edge. Now getting it right into the corner of this page is going to be a little bit tricky. What I've decided to do is to actually line that up with the edge of the page so that I know it's straight and then I'll only take my bricks along this line and they it just I just won't go right into the spine. And I think as long as I've got a straight line along there it will look okay. And then so I will start now with this sort of template You've got lots of options. Um, you can get your chalk pastels and just go over. Now you need to be a little bit careful because you might change the colour of things that you've coloured underneath. So if you do it very lightly that's fine. I'm not going to do that. I think it's a great idea if you just want one layer of colour then it's brilliant. But I want to shade under my bricks and things like that and I don't want to have a page full of pastel that I smudge over with my hand all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pencil. Now we have two colour options that we could go for really with a brick wall. We could, well, there's more than two but in my mind there's two that I have been thinking of. Either grey bricks which um, I think would be quite, would work very well behind this. It would go with the colour scheme really well. Or we can use a sort of brick colour, red brick, like um, these sorts of um, colours. Now I haven't really, I think the grey brick, this, this colour is a bit of a risk because I'm not sure how well it's going to go. But that's what I'm going to use because <laughs> I'm going to take a risk. So this is actually the cinnamon. Um, I'm just trying to decide where to start what colour. I think I'm, I'm going to start with the cinnamon and what I'm going to do is give it a sharpen. There we go. Is get my um, template in position like that. So I don't know how well you can see. Now getting it so that it's definitely straight is a little bit difficult horizontally. Vertically, well, I can push it into the spine and then hope it looks straight and I can look along this line here to see if it looks straight as well which it actually doesn't so I'm going to try again in fact you could line it up with one of those lines but are they straight? yes okay and I'm going to start drawing so what I'm going to do is just draw the each brick shape like this. Now I need to hold the template carefully because now it doesn't matter if they're not exact because you can fiddle around with it after. And they are wibbly wobbly shapes, but we want to keep them so that they're so that the template doesn't move too much. We need them to stay um, the horizontal and lines to stay correct. Does that make sense? Okay. And then I'm just going to continue that all the way down. And I'm going to stop the video and do that and come back to you because it's not going to be very interesting and I'm not going to talk much because I want to concentrate. I also want to pull the book closer to me so I can really see what I'm doing. So I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to draw around each one. Okay. Now, before I go, if you don't have a template, I have a video on how to draw bricks with a ruler. So you could follow that instead. The bricks are more um, um, square than this. These are quite wibbly wobbly. But 
you can um, follow that if you want and I will put a link to that definitely in the video. But I'm going to go off and I'm going to draw all my shapes. Um, yeah, and then I'll come back to you. Right, I have come back just to show you um, a little bit tip well a little bit so if we come in I don't know how easy it is for you to see the bricks but I think you can probably just about make them out all I've done is pop that on the corner and drawn through it round it so we've still got this edge and the bottom left to do and what I intend to do is to sort of obviously pop this on I need to line it up with where I um with where I started and ended and that's a little bit tricky but I'm going to do my best and what I might do is where we've got a really tiny brick here or here I might just extend that a little bit but what I think I'll do is just line it up as best I can so um, like that draw them on and then um, when I come back to you, we'll be colouring them in and I'll just talk you through um, how I might tidy some of them up because they're quite messy, but it doesn't matter at this point. We just want the general shapes. It's got a big loop on it and this one's got a messy bit. When we, when we come back, we'll do it. Now, keep going. Um, well done if you're having a go. And uh, when I've done the whole page, just filling in the stencil, I'll come back to you. Now, one thing, you could colour in the stencil rather than just drawing the outline. The reason I'm not doing that is because I'm finding it quite awkward to hold it and draw. If I had to hold it in colour, I think I would give me, it's giving me cramp in my hand. So I want to colour it later. So that's, that's partly my reasoning. I also want to make sure it doesn't get too dark um, and things like that. So, so that's that. But I'm going to go back off and finish this and I'll come back to you. Right, I have now finished. Um, I went to get a coffee as well. My hand was getting crampy, but it took me a little while. And then the post came and made me jump. So there's a funny squiggly line somewhere where I went, whoop. <laughs> but anyway, we've got a basic here. Now, they're all wibbly wobbly anyway, and that's how the template is, as you would have seen. But... Um, I'm going to tidy them up a little bit as I colour them. I'm still going to use my cinnamon and I'm just going to show you on a few of them and then I shall go away and do it all. I'm not going to talk you through the whole page. But I also got a sweater on, I'm cold. But uh, we shall um, come in closer and I will show you a little bit. There we go. Actually, what I'm going to show you is this bit down here. Now, oh here now here look this is where I the stencil switched over um, so that was the end of the stencil and then I started it again here and we've got a straight line going down there of mortar between bricks now that isn't how these types of brick walls work they actually um, extend um, they never they, they sort of overlap a little bit so I'm going to fiddle this slightly now this is slightly offset from this unfortunately but we can that's okay what I'm going to do is make that one part of this brick I'll colour it in while we're doing it I'll just show you so what we want to do is put in enough colour so it looks really even so that we can't see the edge you know we don't want the the edge to be drawn like it's a, a line so now although those two line up this one doesn't so it looks a little better Okay, so I will do a little bit of fiddling like that as I go, and this one I might just straighten it. Perhaps I shouldn't. Perhaps I should leave it. Should have left it a bit. And this one that hasn't got a top, so I'll just draw one in. So they're gonna be. It's, it was quite a quick rough um, idea, but uh, I can just start to colour in, and I'm gonna do a side to side motion with my colouring because. I think if you look at red bricks, they sometimes have lines going across like that. And this one, it just where does it end? We don't know. So I'm just going to draw in a bit of a line there. And it can be really wibbly. You know, they are wibbly lines, so that's okay. Now try not to make your bricks really, really dark at this point, because I really want the colouring to stand out 
not the brick wall that's the background so although we want the background there so you can see it I don't want it really dark so I'm just doing these quite light and this paper showing through as cement I may just leave it that color I had considered doing the whole background the the mortar in a different color but I think if we leave it paper color not only would it be a lot easier but I think it will um, make the background fade back more. So I'm going to colour every brick now, just with this cinnamon, nothing else. And in it is even, a fairly even-ish. You don't need to make it really even. Bricks aren't even. But I'm just going to, you know, get some colour down. And so I'm going to go away again and do that and then come back and show you um, what other touches I'm going to add. So as I say, sometimes you will find that because... Um, it, you might be much better than me but at times like here there's no bottom to the brick and that's a weird that wibbly line looks a bit old things so as you color them you can just um alter them a little bit and and just make them all look like they make sense like here i've got a brick sort of almost missing so i have to just draw it in but don't worry about your wibbly lines because this template is wibbly so it doesn't matter. It's a very official term, our term wibbly. Anyway, as I say, I'm off to colour in. I'll come back and show you. Right, I am back and I have to say that took me ages. <laughs> I was on the phone, I was doing other things and it took me a long time. One thing I've noticed is that my line going down here is, uh, isn't is straight, but it's too late really. Well, I can probably extend these bricks to sort of make it line up. So I'm going to probably do that. Now, <clears throat> you could stop here and just leave this as it is. But for me, I want to add some more details. Firstly, I don't want all my bricks to be exactly the same colour. I don't want them to get too dark. But what I'm going to do is grab, I'm just trying to find the right colour. Um... I think this one might work. I'm going to try. It's a bit pink. Um, no, we won't do that one. We'll grab this one. This is the Venetian red. And what I might do is on some of the bricks, let's just look at this one. Oh. There we go. This one up here. Um, yeah. It's just put a, some darker areas in some bits like this and sort of add a bit of texture to the brick not pressing too hard because remember I was saying you know I didn't want them to look um, stand out from the plants I want the plants to be the sort of main focus still so just a bit of texture and colour so I'm going to do that on every brick with the Venetian red I'm not going to show you all of that but that's what I'm going to do and, <clears throat> excuse me, despite saying that I didn't want to do any mortar, I have decided that I want some mortar between the bricks. So I'm going to use a couple of the warm greys from the polychromos. I will probably use these two. I shall try and see. Warm grey three and five. And I'll show you three. I will just do over all of it like that. Okay, just an even layer across the whole page. Um, well, you know, in all the gaps. But what I want to do is emphasize the bricks. Actually, if we do a bit around underneath this one, because this one's sort of more finished, you'll see what I mean. So this is still the warm gray three, but now I'm grabbing the five. And what I'm gonna do is underneath the brick, just add a little bit of darker. Um, a sort of like shadow. I'm going to fade it down a bit into the other um, colour. Like that. And what you find is it gives the brick a little bit more of a three-dimensional look. It looks like it's standing out of the page a bit more than the other, so it's less flat. So I'm going to do that now across the whole page. I'm going to disappear off again to do that like I did before. Um, <clears throat> now, I have been thinking slightly before I go about light source. Now, we want this at the moment. It looks a bit like it's just floating in front of a brick wall. And you could be forgiven for thinking it's not actually um, attached to the wall. So when I come back, we're going to add some shadow 
to this whole thing as well to make it look a bit more like it's on the wall. I just think we need to finish the brick background first. So I was thinking that my light source would be coming from here. Okay, that's just my thought. Um, it doesn't have to come from there. That was just what I was thinking, what I decided. So that I can then put some shadow on the top of each shelf and against the wall there and also on the right hand side of the two pillars. It just allowed me to think about where the shadow would be but with the bricks it's going to be the same. So with this slightly darker brown we might put some shadow on the left of each brick as well as underneath like that. Okay and we do that for all the bricks and then it will tie in. Obviously our plant pots have their light source coming from the front which is not going to quite work but I'm hoping that it just will tie together and it won't look too bad we'll have to wait and see so as I say I'm going to go off again I'm going to do a layer of the um, warm grey three in between all the bricks as mortar now if you don't want to do that and you want to keep the paper but you like the idea of the shadowing then just use this to do a bit of shadowing okay and leave some bits of the paper without any you could try that and I'm also going to use the Venetian red on each brick just to do a little bit of detailing now some bricks are also got black in they might have moss on things like that so you could add in other colors I don't want to um, have greens because we've got green plants so I'm just gonna try that and see how it looks and I'll be away and I'll come back as soon as I finish I won't do anything else apart from what I've just said but if I think it needs something a bit extra I'll tell you and uh, and then have a go at it so that's me again off again and uh, and I'll be back Hi, I am back again after working on these bricks a little more. Um, I did exactly what I said, so I used the Venetian red to do some lines and a little bit of detailing on the bricks, and I did some shadow underneath. So there we go. Now, you could leave it like that, but I still want to add a little more on here. When I look at this, it looks a bit like there's a wooden shelf floating in front of a brick wall. We haven't got anything to sort of, as Johanna Basford would use the phrase, ground it. It's not going to be ground, it's going to be, I want it to look like it's pushed against the wall. So I think if we can add a few shadows here and there, it might help us. So, oh, I also need to say, I thought about this later. I said the light source was coming from here. It isn't. We've got shadow on this side and the bottom. It's actually going to be coming from that side but it doesn't matter really as long as you put the shadow on the same side of everything so we have the shadow on this side of our brick here so we need it on this side of our um, shelving so I've got my dark sepia it's a little bitty um, pencil and I'm just going to do a shadow line along here I'm not going to make it too big I hope you can see. I don't really want to zoom in too far because I will. Um, let's go in a little bit. I'll forget to move the paper, but you won't be able to see when it's far away. There we go. Let's leave it like that. I've only done this bit. So you can see, I'm just doing the little line along here. I'm doing the line on the wall rather than on the uh, not on the actual shelf. So it looks like the shelf is just creating the smallest of little shadow along here okay and then we're going to do the same on the other beam I went out of shot I knew I would um, so we're going to do the same down here I'm ignoring all the pots and plants at the moment because they're going to be tricky I'm just trying to cope with the easy bit at the moment so all the way down down here like that now our bricks also have a shadow underneath so we'll do that with our shelves too Let's put a little shadow on the brick underneath now I've chosen the dark sepia I like using the dark sepia for shadows I always think it's quite effective but I know I used a lighter grey for the shadow on the sort of mortar between the bricks but that was a this needs to go across the brick and the um, mortar so I want to make sure it can stand out and you can't see the end of the shelf 
Sorry. Hang on. Let me try and just get it all in short. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been a long time since I filmed the other bit of this. I was on the phone again while I was colouring, which was fun. I've just realised that I haven't done this brick here with the Venetian red. I'm just going to do it now because I've just spotted it. Why I didn't spot it when I was? Uh... There we go. Um, I didn't know why I didn't spot it when I was doing the the uh, shadowing, but uh, maybe it was a bit when I was on the phone, just chattering to my mum about this and that, which was fun. She was telling me about her brother, who unfortunately isn't too well, and uh, different bits of news. So that was good. Uh, my dad was around but he fell asleep <laughs> she said he's been falling asleep a lot lately but I don't maybe he's not sleeping well he uh, he's a bit stressed poor chappy right so I already feel like that is looking better but it might be hard to see in the camera but I already think that's looking better now what I need to also do is Oh, underneath these, under here. Oh, I didn't do that bit down there, did I? There we go. Now, I'm sort of thinking about the um, the pots and thinking maybe they should have a bit of shadow each side of them. But then I might have to do it for the flowers and the plants and it gets a bit it gets a lot so I'm not sure and the snail and the paper and blah, blah, blah. you know how much how far do I go how much do I do now my inspiration for this picture is an absolutely gorgeous 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 picture by cherry colors on Instagram go and look at her if you haven't seen her pictures they are stunning her brick wall picture of this is just incomprehensibly amazing um, and she has actually got this bit here on hers is completely black um, we shadow but uh, I think I'm just going to put a bit on the side of each pot now you can keep adding shadow and details forever I think I could keep I don't think I could ever get my picture looking like hers but um, anyway what's the phrase inspiration not, I can't remember, be inspired, don't be put off, basically. So, uh, I try my best. So, yeah, a bit of shadow and from the apple, I think. We can do a bit um, where the pots are touching each other as well. I think I will just not at the minute. I'm just keeping it as simple for me. I don't want to get it too too much, too daunting really. So I'm just going to have a look at this after, and see how it looks really and see whether I think it needs a bit more or if it's okay. Hmm, let's see. See, I'm wondering whether there should be some shadow uh, on the top of the shelves as well. But if the light's hitting the shelf, I mean, the objects might be causing some more shadow on the wall, but we've got a bit there. So uh, I think I'm going to leave it. I think if I fiddle and faddle too much, it's gonna, uh, I'm gonna risk just making it all look black, which isn't what I want to achieve. So I think I'm gonna leave it there. So let me zoom out. Let's remove the paper. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's, as I say, it isn't anything like as good as other ones that I've seen. But, um, but I think it's okay. I think it definitely looks like 
you can see what it's supposed to be and that's good so uh, as I say I'm going to leave it there um, so yeah so thank you for watching I hope that was okay I didn't want to make it too complex and uh, I hope that you know you could have done no background you could have done one with just a pastel a stencil you could just have smudged a bit of pastel around you know in a random color you don't, to make it look like a whitewash wall or a you know slightly painted wall you didn't need to do all the bricks but it's just a different thing to do isn't it so there we go so thank you for watching um thank you for sticking for the whole series it's been a really long one i think it might be my longest i'm not sure maybe not maybe 30 days of flowers is a bit longer i'm not sure i haven't counted how many um there were but um there'll be something from a different book um starting tomorrow i haven't decided yet so be surprised to me as well as a surprise to you but for now um thank you again and happy coloring <laughs>